In this final tutorial, we'll finish the grocery list app by creating our own custom layout for each row with duplicate and delete buttons. Just like with spinners, in order to create a custom layout for our list view, we're going to have to create our own adapter class. So I'm going to right click on the package folder and then select new Java class. This class will be called list view adapter and we can go ahead and press enter. So we have our class over here. List view adapter is going to extend the array adapter class and its type is going to be string. Inside over here, we're going to create a constructor for our list view adapter class. This constructor will take in two parameters, context from our app, uh, main activity, and it will also take in a, a list of items that we want to display. The first thing that we're going to do is make a call to the array adapters constructor by using the super keyword, passing in this context. The second thing that it requires as a parameter is an integer. This integer is the ID of the, the layout that we're going to be using for each row. We haven't created that layout yet, but when we do, it will be called, um, we will call it list row. So that's what we're going to use for right now. And the third parameter requires is the list of items that we're going to be using in our list view. Now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and create some global variables. We'll create an array list of string called list and we'll create a, a global variable for context. So now inside of our constructor, we'll say this.context equals context, and we will say list equals items. So we have this complete. And the very uh, there's a function called getView that we want to override. This is a very important function because this is where we're going to actually make the changes to the each row and display the, the text as well as respond to clicks on the buttons. So if you do control O, we can see a list of uh, methods that we can override and we're going to select get view. So this is what the get view method looks like. And it gives us a couple of parameters. The convert view fun this convert view object over here refers to each row inside of our list view. So what we want to do is check if this convert view is not equal to null. I mean, if it is equal to null, then we're going to have to inflate it with some content. And at the end of our get view method, we're going to return this convert view, which we've made changes to. So this is the view for each row that we're going to modify. And if it is null, we're going to create a layout inflator object called layout inflator. This is going to be equal to um, our context dot get system services, and then we're going to pass in activity dot layout inflator service. Activity dot layout inflator service. Using this layout inflator object, we can now say convert view is going to be equal to a layout inflator dot inflate. And over here, we're going to have to provide the layout that we want to put into this convert view. Once again, that's going to be r.layout.list row, which we haven't created yet, but we're going to do very soon. And the second parameter, we can just uh, pass in null. So with this done, we're ready to go ahead and create this list view layout. So I'm going to right click on the layout folder, hover over new, select new layout resource file, and I'm going to call this list row. I'm going to go ahead to the split view that way I can see both the code as well as what it's going to look like. This uh, constraint layout is going to be replaced with a relative layout. Let's take a quick look at our app again to see what's inside of each row. There are four main elements. We have a text view for displaying the row number for each item, the actual item's name, and then we have two image views for the copy and delete buttons. So to save time, instead of typing all the code out for the two text views, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it. And this is the part where you can pause the video to catch up and type it all out. The main things to note are that the ID for the text view that displays the row number is called number, and the ID for the text view that displays the item's name is called name. This is important because we'll be working with it in our list view adapter class. Now that we have these two, we can create the image views for the delete and replace uh, duplicate buttons. The width will be 22 SP and the height will also be 22 SP. This first button over here is going to be the copy button or duplicate. So I'll just give it an ID of copy. It's going to be centered vertically. And it will also be um, to the left of the remove button. So now I'm just going to copy and paste this to create the remove button. So I'll remove that. And its ID will be called remove. It's going to have some margin on the right, about 18 SP. This button will also have margin on its right of 18 SP. And now the one thing that we have to do is actually set the source for both of these image views. 
And just like we did in one of the earlier tutorials, we're going to have to create that from the vector assets. So right click on the travels folder, hover over new and select vector asset. We're going to add in the remove icon first. So we'll search for remove and you can see here, it says remove circle and right? we're going to click OK. We're going to go ahead and make this red. So I can just click on that and click choose and that's a nice red color. And we'll rename this to remove. Now that we have this done, we can press next and finish. And underneath our jobbles folder, you can see over here, we have remove.xml. We're going to do the same thing for the duplicate button, hover over new and then select vector asset. Now we're going to search for clipboard or uh, I think it was copy. Yeah, we can choose this icon content copy and press okay. And we can change it to a blue color. So something like that, that's a nice blue. Click choose and we'll call this duplicate and press next and then finish. Uh, one, now to uh, for our image views, we can say Android source, at drawable, and then duplicate. And I can just copy that line and paste it here. And this will be our remove button. And one more thing that we have to do is center this. I forgot to do this. We have to make this um, button align to the parent's right. So say align parent right true. And this is our basic layout. You can see over here what it looks like. We have our two buttons on the right side and our text views do not have any text. That's why we can't see them. Our layout for the list view row is complete so we can head back over to the adapter. And now this is the part where we're going to make changes to each of these four elements inside of our uh, row. So what we're going to do is to get the text view that displays the row number and actually change it, we're going to say text view number equals convert view because it's located inside of this convert view, that find view by id r.id.number. And this position uh, uh, parameter over here is the index of the current row. So that's what we're gonna say number.set text position plus one, because that's the row number and follow that by a period. We can copy and paste this and do the uh, similar thing for the name. So text view name is equal to convert view to find view by id r.id.name. And inside for the name text view, we're going to set the text to list.getPosition. List.getPosition. So that deals with the first two text views for displaying the row number as well as the item's name. Now we have to create the image view objects for the duplicate and delete buttons. So I can say duplicate equals convert view dot find view by id r dot id dot copy. And I'll copy and paste this for the remove button, the remove image view. And I'm going to set on click listeners for both of these. These on click methods is where we have to handle duplicating or removing the current row. If you remember in our main activity, we conveniently made two functions that do this for us, the remove item function, as well as the add item function. The problem is we can't uh, call them by saying main activity dot add item. You can see it's not suggesting that because they're not static. So we're going to go ahead and add a static keyword to these functions. And now you can see we can say main activity dot add item and we can call this add item function from our list view adapter class. And the add item function takes um, it, it takes a string as an argument. That's the item that we want to add. And the item that we want to add is list dot get position. That way we can duplicate this item. To, similarly, to remove an item inside the onClick method for the remove button, uh, the remove image view, we'll say main activity dot remove item. And this requires the index of the item to be removed. And remember that index is called position. So this handles that. But now you may, if you, inside of our main activity class, there's some red because these variables as well me, need to be made static. So we're gonna go to the top where we define the list view variable and add the static keyword. We're going to do the same for items as well as adapter. And now you can see that the red has disappeared. So now that we've actually created our list view adapter class and we have the layout for each row, the last thing that we have to do is actually use that list view adapter instead of the regular array adapter. So we're gonna go up to the top of our main activity class. And instead of using this array adapter of type string, we're gonna use the array adapter that we created, which is called list view adapter. And then over here on line 58, adapter is gonna be a new list view adapter. And the parameters that the constructor takes are a little different. It requires context, so get application context, and items. So we can delete that second parameter. And now the red has disappeared and we can run our app to see if it works.
Okay, this is what our grocery list app looks like right now. And you can see that it's a little cramped because inside of our list row.xml, I forgot to add some padding to the parent relative layout. So see Android padding, 15, and I'll run this now. And now the grocery list app is complete and it looks really good. We have each of the items in our grocery list with the row number on its left. We also have the duplicate and delete buttons. Let's go ahead and test out all the functionality that we gave this app over the course of these tutorials. So I can long press on the bananas row and you can see that it removes the banana from the list. I can click on the duplicate button for the orange and it gets added to the bottom. I can delete strawberry by clicking on the red button over here. I can continue to duplicate orange as many times as I want. And I can also add new items to my list. So I can add strawberry, for example, to my list by clicking on this button here. And now we have strawberry added to our grocery list. And that's it. In this tutorial series, you learned how to create a grocery list app using list views from scratch. You learned how to add and remove items dynamically from list views, as well as create a custom layout and adapter for your list view. If you found this useful, please make sure to subscribe and share the channel with others so that it can continue to grow. See you in the next tutorial.